Indiana Jones may have raided the Lost Ark, but has he ever built a PC in one? Probably not, because Indiana Jones takes place in the 40s, I think? There's Nazis in it, right? Indiana Jones is old, is what I'm saying, and he couldn't build in a computer even if he tried. But today, we're in the future, the geometric future. Geometric Future is a computer case company that I have never heard of. So this is the first case that we're looking at from them and I'm pretty excited. We saw this online and we thought this looks really cool. We have to get this in and first impressions are negative. Um, it's like, it's just, it's plasticky. You know what? It's the outside of the case, whatever. It's kind of a showpiece. If you're not planning on moving your computer around, maybe that doesn't matter too much to you. I'm excited to see if it's gonna be interesting to build in how it comes apart. Apparently, it's reversible. The bottom and the top can change. And then it also looks like it has support for a 360 millimeter rad, maybe more. Let's start by taking it apart. Where's the, where's the front IO? This, we got a power button up here. Okay, we'll, we'll figure that out as maybe, maybe there is no front IO, that's a, what I'd call a bad choice if you were building a PC case, um, because I think most people like to plug stuff in. And also, it doesn't even look like you'll be able to have access to the back of your computer either very easily, because these mesh filters slash plastic side pieces, they don't just come out, they come out with screws. So it's not like these are like doors that would swing open, which would be nice. They only bend because they're so plasticky. Now that we've taken off one of the side panels, we can take a little bit of a closer look at the uh, kind of inside pattern, which I think looks really cool. It kind of reminds me of Cocoon, if you've ever played that. It's a really good indie game that came out in 2023. Highly recommend it. But yeah, it's, it's flimsy. Another downside is also that the mesh filter is bent into the, side, into the structured side panel, which is um, kind of annoying for cleaning. Yeah. But there's a lot of space between the mesh and the actual structure. So I don't think that cleaning this would actually end up being too hard. You could probably just take this out, run it under some water or vacuum it, and you'd have no problems. So this is also kind of weird. There is two screw holes here, but these only had single screws in them. Maybe this was supposed to be another screw hole and they just didn't drill through it in manufacturing, but looking at the other side panels, uh, they all don't have these screwed in. And if this is supposed to be some sort of like press fit kind of lock, um, like to clip into this little hole, it does a terrible job at that. It just uh, doesn't do anything. As you can see from these two side panels, it's not exactly a square on the ends. It is more, it is a rectangle. Um, so this side, one side is slightly wider than the other. They're a relatively new case manufacturer, but they do have like four different models of case available. So it's not like this is like their first time. Uh, it looks like here the front, they have support for a radiator. Um, what's weird is that these cutouts here are like, they don't look like they're 120 millimeter increments. This looks like it's a, they're kind of more like at 90 millimeter increments. It looks like this supports 120 or 140 millimeter fans. And it also looks like it supports a, to a 360 rad. This is a micro ATX or mini ITX enclosure. Um, wow, these are some. Look at this, look at the size of these zip ties. <laughs> Those are thick. That's like kidnapping somebody thick. Is it, you know, like, is there, there's no front IO. This is the only included cables. There must not be any front IO. They have an RGB header for your power light and then a switch button. Inside this box, inside of our box, we got, <laughs> wow, a big microfiber cloth, which is great because you're gonna be polishing this plastic a lot. We got more absolutely ludicrously thick zip ties. And what is it? This bag is so nice. Oh, never mind. Take that back. Uh, it's like a Ziploc, it's a Ziploc bag, but it's like, it's thick. Um, and inside we have some brackets for stuff. I think maybe this might be a GPU anti sag bracket. We got some PCIe brackets, some thick ass, real thick cable ties for what? I don't know. This looks like it's supposed to be some sort of power supply mount, a extension cable for your power supply, a whack load of miscellaneous screws. On top of that, we got uh, a lot of cable ties. Like I think like that's five, this is like maybe seven. Um, so, I mean, accessories wise, that's it's pretty okay. And then what is this? What is this like a faux leather mouse pad? Okay, that's kind of, that's a cool value add, I guess. 
Um, it's really curled up. Also leather, it's like fake leather. I don't know if it flans too nicely. Also, wait, there's a texture on it, which is not ideal. This printing on top of it is not flush, it's textured, which is definitely not ideal for any sort of tracking surface. They refer to it as a customized double-sided table mat. Um, so they don't specifically say it's for mousing. Whoa, and a thick bound <laughs> user manual. Um, a new approach M2 Mini ITX open frame compact chassis. It's not really an open frame if you have uh, four walls on it. But before we get any further, there's one last thing in the box. That looks like a USB-C header for a motherboard. And that goes to this dock. Oh, this goes directly into your motherboard. This would be way better as an extension if this was female and then I would have this on my desk. Also, if you were wondering if the Ark was related to something biblical, this is called Noah. Clearly the talk in the Bible. Uh, it says that the USB-A ports are 10 gigabit per second as well as the type C. I am unsure if they can do all of that at the same time. And it has a microphone headphone jack. So this goes to your PC, then you put your microphone in your headphone and that all goes through your single USB-C port. I like it though, I, I, you know, I don't hate it. I like how we can get so much connectivity through just one USB-C port, though it would be nice to just have more expansion, but three USB-A's and a Type-C is not so bad. They claim to have durable materials, but also that it's one millimeter plus 1.15 millimeter steel which is not famously durable. That's pretty thin. Thankfully, uh, it looks like the chassis is put together with all of the exact same type of screw. So there's not gonna be a ton of sorting that you need to do. Uh, I really appreciate that. And I'm glad that more and more companies are doing that these days. Uh, and then we're supposed to take out uh, this thing. That is the thumb screw, but it's also in there pretty good. Uh, which looks to be Support for some SSDs. That's gonna be my guess for this. Probably maybe a couple of two and a half inch drives. And that basically leaves us with just the shell. That's kind of all you're really looking at when it comes to what the case actually is when you take off all of the nice fascia. Let's see what it's like to build in it. After I tell you about our sponsor, Cooktech. <laughs> Apparently it's pronounced Cooktech. Cooktech offers quality power banks and chargers to keep your phone, laptop, and other devices going throughout the day. Their popular 15 power bank provides a 20,000 milliamp hour capacity and a total of 150 watts of power across its two USB-C ports and one USB-A port. And the 15 power bank itself can be charged at a rate of 90 watts, providing zero to 50% charge in just 30 minutes. If anything goes wrong, Cooktech offers an 18 month long-term warranty to replace any faulty units. Get yours today using the link below. While there's not a crazy amount of different ways to orient the stuff in this case, you are gonna have to be careful based on how thick your graphics card is because that's gonna affect where your PSU is going to be mounted. You might actually have to turn your PSU 90 degrees if you're using a full-sized four four-slot GPU. Um, we're gonna take out these uh, little rails and I might as well just get them straight mounted onto the CPU cooler we have. That's just gonna save me time. And these look, are these, in I wonder if these are interchangeable. We'll find out when we take them off if they're exactly the same. Oh yeah, that's the same component, cool. Uh, we, now we can see we have a movable and adjustable motherboard back plate. You can see that we have these rails along which we can slide it through these screws as well as multiple screw holes for fastening it down in these various different settings. Um, what I do actually appreciate is that, I don't know if this is anywhere on their website, but they have a lot of different specs if you're worried about hardware compatibility here. It's uh, really great to see that because it talks about the differences in hardware compatibility if you have a GPU of a different size or a power supply of a different size. Oh wow, so if you know the length of your graphics card, they actually tell you exactly where you should slide it along the scale. It's 300, 310, 320. That's actually really nice. And the fact that it's stamped in there makes it really, really easy as the user to do. What I will say is that because I can take off pretty much all of the sides, this is absolutely easy to build in. Like I have so much space. Like look, like look at all that room. It's incredible. It, it supports ATX power supplies too. Like, uh, and now we take a little bracket and we just slap that on. This bracket here doesn't quite align with the uh, power supply screw holes because it has this top lip. And I think that this top lip's gonna be a little thick and it's like maybe not expecting the top of this power supply to be so thick. While this, maybe this mount doesn't work, maybe we'll have to try the 90 degree mount, which we have over here. So that's just kind of in there with the, the two screws. Um, apparently the solution to this is one of their nylon cable ties. Nylon? Is that the Velcro ones? 
That must be one of their long Velcro cable ties, which is on the ground over here. This is, this is very unconventional <laughs> um, to just be like, yeah, yeah, we're not gonna give you like a full, PA, a full power supply bracket. We're just gonna give you, I thought this was five wide ones. It turns out I was totally wrong earlier. It's just one long boy. Well, I should have done that before. <laughs> I should have routed this through before because I guess I go under. I mean, it wiggle less now. <laughs> Oop. One weird thing is that we don't have any pre-installed um, PCIe brackets. So apparently we put this here and then we get the rest of the GPU in by screwing in this side to somewhere. <laughs> and <laughs> honey, I don't got a lot of faith. This is gonna be interesting. Because of how thick the metal is on these, you can kind of see actually that there's a little oh, yeah, yeah. bit of space between the two of these because it's not perfectly flush. I can't plug this display port in here and have the security uh, latches actually engage. Oh, yeah, see? So it just comes out without using the switch. Oh, that time it seems like it, it caught. Something to be careful of, I guess. So that mounts to there. Oh my God, this is only mounting to the motherboard tray. So we're gonna have like so much weight on just this plastic right now. <laughs> All right, let's get some cables in here. Oh my God, no. <laughs> That's bad. Uh, in terms of cable management, it looks, you're gonna have a decent amount of space just coming out from behind the power supply, which is pretty good. Um, obviously there's not much room to hide your cables in a case such as this, but it's mesh on all the sides anyway, so it's not gonna be super visible. Though I guess actually you kind of can see in through the corners, so it might be a bigger ordeal than I would hope. But hey, you watched my cube video and you know how much I care about cable management. Nothing. It's stupid. You know, I really wish there was cable management like along here because I kind of got this extra little cable that I'd like to deal with. And this seems like the only real good place to strap it. I guess maybe I could strap it along the edges. Just be nice to run it flush down all the way. Let's get the CPU cooler in there. It's, uh, it's gonna be a tight squeeze, but I, I think we're good. I think we're good. Now that we've put an AIO in it, there's actually rigidity, <laughs> which is good. Um, no more wobble, except for maybe this part. That's pretty good. Um, yes, I'm sorry. I know a white AIO. It was not my fault. Blame that man. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So you can mount your drives here. This goes behind the motherboard tray and it supports one three and a half inch and two and a half inch drive or two two and a half inch drives which is pretty sick for a small form factor case. I'm always loving the extra room and especially support for hard drives. I'm a big data hoarder, so I like drives. I don't mind this solution. I think it's kind of cool to have your IO on a little puck on your desk. You can put this under your desk or something, but this is so short. This cable, if I plug it into where my motherboard is, I can get it out the side here and it can dangle or maybe it can make it on top of the case. Like it's really not long. So what they should have done is made this a female so that I could put any other USB-C to C cable in there and then just run it as an extension or make this long enough that it can reach somewhere on my desk. Now, one thing we haven't done, but that you can do is we can change the top panel and the bottom panel so that the buttons and the stuff is at the top and you can route all your cables through the bottom, um, which is a good idea because you have your back IO out here so you can run all of your cables at the bottom. One thing to note is that putting them at the bottom will make them a little bit less accessible and it will mean that you'll have to like lift up your computer to plug stuff in. But if you're not plugging stuff into your back IO that often and you can make do with the front IO and considering that you have a pretty good amount of front IO, I don't understand why you wouldn't just flip it no matter what and why it didn't get shipped that way. We're gonna leave it the other way cause that's how they shipped it. Um, and also uh, I don't got time for that. Now, as I put all of my side panels back on, I guess I should put that on too. I realize, you realize kind of the issue is that you're gonna have to route all of your cables out of this somehow. And there's not gonna be a really clean or accessible way to do that because you have these screwed on. It would have been really, really nice if at least this one side had a hinge because then we could open it up and easily access our back IO. But that's just not how it is with this case. And now I get to use my fancy cloth because my Filthy grubby fingers got all over this. So they gave me the world's biggest microfiber. You know, there's something satisfying about building a computer and I think that high is kind of like making me like this more than I should. Um, 
because I feel good about building this case, but it's bad. Sure, it was easy to build in because it was very open, and I think that the styling is unique, distinct, and pretty cool, but, and, and you know what, this puck thing kind of neat, uh, shout out to Noah, but it's just so flimsy, which might not be a bad thing if maybe this is like a budget case, right? If this is a design we could get at a lower price where you don't see these kinds of cool designs, then maybe it's worth it, but it's, uh, so what is the price? Shut up, 169 US? That's bad, this is a, no. If this case was maybe a hundred dollars, even then I would be kind of hesitant to recommend it. Maybe at the 60 or $70 price range, it would be cool. I think that, uh, you know, you won't, don't have to worry about thermals. Noise is probably gonna be okay too because there's, less, there's just lots of airflow here. Dust is obviously gonna be an issue. It's an open case. It's a very open case, so dust is always gonna be an issue. Luckily, it's so open that it shouldn't be too hard to clean. It will take maybe four, eight screws to take apart, which is pretty bad compared to just like a case window where you can just get in there with a vacuum or something like that. But again, we're in the small form factor realm. And if you, in the small form factor realm, while it's very compatible, it's also very big. Um, but I just, I just can't really get past the shoddy build quality. It is so plasticky. It's, it feels like it's bent. Is it, Andrew pointed out, is it actually on level? Yeah, it's like bent. I don't know if I, <laughs> it's not flat. Um, and I think that bend is because of the weight that was put on this while I was working in the case. And the fact that it can't survive a single build, like it's garbage, it's bad. So it turns out that this is not a mouse pad, so that's good but it's a pad so you can lay this on its side without scratching its delicate plastic body. Hey. <laughs> you know, you hate to see it. If this was $70 and didn't suck, it would be worth buying. <laughs> but at $169, out to lunch pricing, it's awful. It's mostly plastic. It's uh. Yeah, don't buy that. It's a big disappointment. Thanks for watching Short Circuit. If you like this video, why don't you watch a video with a case that's actually worth buying, like the Cooler Master Cube 500. It's a flat pack case and it's pretty cool.